In each coming together, every time the two beings unite, get close, brush against each other, whether two plants, two animals, one animal and a plant, an animal and a human being, a human being with a human being, life is transmitted. A life discovered barely 50 years ago, a different form of life. For years, physicists claimed that this was material for them to study. They were inert beings, simple crystals in nature. But no. Scientists who characterized the life of the invisible discovered that in the deepest part of a rare and simple structure, there beats life. But what kind of life? They're everywhere. Millions and millions of beings that surround us and invade us. Active and inert at the same time hidden in nature or latent in our own bodies, leaping between species, evolving, threshing the earth. We hereby inform you of the possible appearance of an outbreak of hemorrhagic fever in Angola. The Marburg virus is suspected. Never before had the Marburg virus appeared in the west of Africa. The news led to an urgent meeting of epidemiologists, virologists, specialists in infectious diseases. This is the GOARN, the center of the World Health Organization responsible for keeping watch and responding to the appearance of epidemic outbreaks in any part of the world. A screen displays the country suspected of suffering an outbreak and the possible infectious agent causing this. If a virus is not controlled, it can spread throughout the world. But there is no international law that obliges a country to declare that it is suffering an outbreak. They tend to hide this. What the World Health Organization often receives are pure and simple rumors. The specialists discuss whether or not these are credible, whether or not they have to press the alarm button. About half of the information that comes into this room are these rumors from uh, media reports. We also get emails from uh, visitors, travelers uh, in different nations. We get official reports and uh, from the countries themselves, the ministries of health, and we also get unofficial reports from NGOs. The appearance of the Marburg virus in Angola requires immediate international intervention. The country does not have the capacity to control the outbreak there is the risk that it will spread beyond its borders. The WHO has to act, but this Ministry for World Health is forced to ask for money so as to be able to intervene. This operation doesn't have a reservoir of money that it can draw on uh, to finance an outbreak from beginning to end. And so we had to send out a request uh, to donor countries asking for their support. Once on the ground, they have to find all the possible patients, isolate them to slow down the spread of the disease and to be able to eradicate the virus. But they are in hiding. They are scared of the whites who come so menacingly dressed. Nobody explains anything to them. There is a rumor that the whites perform rites, that once they enter the hospital, they will never return home. And nobody has returned home. The government intervenes, it demands that the population, under threat of prison, report suspected sick persons among their neighbors and family. The law is as questionable as it is effective.
The outbreak started in the hospital. The virus was being transmitted from children to mothers, from mothers to other children, brothers, fathers, neighbors infected by simple contact, doctors and nurses as well. But there is no treatment to cure infection by the Marburg virus. And in this outbreak, the virus displayed impressive deadliness. 99% of the patients died. An NGO, Doctors Without Borders, which was operating in the area, took on the task of treating the patients in the same hospital in which the outbreak arose. The hospital was an extremely unsafe place. It was the hospital in which most of the contaminated cases recorded arose. There was a mass of deaths among the health personnel, the nursing personnel working in the hospital. Up to 60 nurses and doctors died in this hospital because of Marlborough. The part we had to install was an isolation unit. An isolation unit means you need a lot of personal. You need a very intensive treatment for your personal so that they can interiorize a heap of rituals and objectives so as to prevent transmission. Rituals that appear simple to us, such as washing hands, how to dress, how to undress, what to do with disposable materials, how to touch or not touch patients. Of course we're afraid. Fear, first of all, is healthy. It keeps you on a state of alert. That is why you are only here for six weeks, because then you stop being afraid. And now it goes that little light that tells you that you are not doing things right. All of us working there had it. Even people who have already gone to other epidemics, who have already worked, who are experienced. But if you don't have it, you are irresponsible because you don't know where you are going. My colleagues who were working in the nearby villages were working with gloves and nothing more. And the cases, well, one always suspected that there would be a case. Well, they were also afraid, which is logical. Knowing how many red blotches you have on your skin because this is a sign of hemorrhage, well, I have never stopped to count how many spots I had, but here we've all looked the next day to see if something new had appeared or not. We've all done it, but nobody says anything so as not to worry. With the hospital converted into a secure place, the NGO allowed patients to receive visits from their families. But the fear of the virus was already widespread, and very few dared to cross the barrier. This girl appeared one day, alone. She asked to see a patient. She accepted the rules. Silent, she swallowed her fear and went in to see him. His pain paralyzed him. The enormous pain provoked by the hemorrhagic fever, the inevitable surrender to the illness, desolation, total dependence on others. And it is precisely now when a patient needs the most care, the moment at which the illness becomes most contagious.
The virus needs closeness to be able to transmit itself through bodily fluids. A simple drop of sweat is enough. The Angola outbreak caused the death of more than 350 people. Half of them were children.